Good morning. Welcome to Parma Grace United Church of Christ at Home. My name is Mike Zabalski. In addition to our in-person worship, we are now offering this weekly worship service on YouTube. We also have an online fellowship hour following worship. If you would like to join, please use the contact page on our church website, www.parmagreaseucc.org, to get more information. You can also add names to the prayer list by using the Submit a Prayer Request button on our website homepage. It is our hope that this service of worship and the weekly meditation provide you with some comfort and stability in this time of great uncertainty. Today is a special day. This is the last service of 2020, a very challenging and unpredictable year for our church and for our world. But our congregation and our community has had some very gifted help during this time. Today is also the last service for Pastor Kurt at Parma Grace. When the pandemic hit, Pastor Kurt agreed to extend his time with us to help us through this time. When he joined us in 2008, Pastor Kurt said, I don't know how to do part-time ministry. I only know one way to do it, and that's what I'm going to do. So for over 12 years, we have seen what that has meant to our church family and to our community. From missions to study to dinners to worship and communion, he has cared for our congregation and our community. So Pastor Kurt, from all of us, thank you for all the sermons, prayers, calls, visits, counsels, and kind words over these last 12 years. They have been appreciated more than you will ever know. We wish you all the best on your new journey. And remember, at least for a few more days, if you need to get pastoral support, please contact Pastor Kurt directly or use the contact page on our church website, Parma Grace United Church of Christ at Home, sharing God's love wherever we are. Now let us prepare our hearts, minds, and spirits for worship. Rejoice in God, who is our life and salvation. Christ has come to make us heirs of God's promises. God commanded and we were created. We are children of the Most High. God opens our eyes to see the light, and we will be called by a new name. Men and women, young and old, sing of God's glory. God has made us heirs of the promise. Let us worship together, praising God's name.
pray together. O oh God, in the sweetness of the story we tell today, the encounter of old and young, Mary and Joseph presenting Jesus to the elders, we feel the movement of your spirit making all things new. Awaken us to your presence in this moment as we seek Christ in our midst. Let us recognize God with us, a light to the nations, your glory revealed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Good morning. I'd like to start today by reading the Collect. Surprising God, so often hidden from our view, yet appearing in unexpected times and places, open our eyes to your salvation. As you led Simeon by your gracious light to embrace the infant Jesus, shed your light on this worshiping community that we may welcome your saving word. We pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all peoples princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. And our second reading comes from Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but a child, and if a child, then also an heir through God. Praise be to God. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. When the time came for the purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as to holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared 
in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory to your people, Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother, Mary, this child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There also was a prophet Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of our Lord. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. For the time being is a long oratorio, a piece of music in which W. H. Auden explored the meaning of Christmas for the mid-20th century person. In some ways, it is the mood that also descends upon many people. For a good number of folk, the Christmas spirit lasts only one day, Christmas Day. During that time, we enjoy a spirit of hope and peace, love and joy. Then, bright and early on December 26th, the tree comes down and life is back to the same ordinary time. In fact, I was amazed when I was listening to Christmas music in the car. And the DJ said, I hope you're enjoying the music of the season. It will come to an end on Christmas night at 9 p.m when we will go back to our regular broadcasting. For the church, this is not true. December 25th is only the beginning, and today we are a quarter of the way through our celebration of the 12 days of Christmas. In the church, it does not end until Epiphany and the visit of the Magi. And in our gospel this morning, we meet a family for whom things never got back to the way it was before. Mary and Joseph, in this story, are doing everything that was expected of new parents. Mary goes for her purification ritual and returns to the worshiping community. The baby is presented for dedication to God and redeemed in the ritual for the firstborn son. Then suddenly, out of the blue, Two people announced themselves, Simeon and Anna. They have come because this child has changed their lives and they will never be the same again. Luke tells us that Simeon was a pious follower of Yahweh, perhaps a rabbi in the temple, but most certainly a devoted follower of the law of God. He had waited for a long time for the consolation of Israel. And that time is the coming of the Messiah. Fed Beekner, in his book, Peculiar Treasures, describes the scene like this. Jesus was still in diapers when his parents brought him to the temple in Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as was the custom, and to offer a sacrifice. That's when old Simeon spotted them. Years before, he had been told he would not die until he saw the Messiah. But now the years were running out. Then the moment finally came when through his cataract-clouded eyes, he saw him, and he speaks those familiar words. Lord, now let your servant depart in peace, for my eyes have seen the salvation you have prepared. He says, that in this child he sees the consolation, the comforter, the one who will draw all people to God. And Anna was there too. We don't know very much about her. Luke says she was a holy prophetess, possibly in her old age, now a widow 
which would account for her being at the temple and never leaving it, as she depended on others who would be coming to the temple to give her the basic necessities of life. She too is there with a special moment when the child arrives and is overjoyed. <clears throat> her lifetime of waiting is over. She wants to go out and tell everyone who is looking for God's salvation that it has arrived. Indeed, with the shepherds, she is one of the first missionaries. The sight of this helpless infant being dedicated to God by his parents has changed the lives of two people. It's almost like the excitement that Myrtle Ewan MacDonald, a great Scottish preacher, said he experienced during World War II as a prisoner of war. He said early one morning he was awakened and told in Gaelic by another prisoner who was in touch with the underground that the BBC just announced that they have come. Going back to his barracks, he keeps repeating to his fellow prisoners the phrase, they have come. Men jumped up and down, hugged each other, ran outside, rolling on the ground in joy. That was June 1944. It would be May of 45 before they would be liberated. Yet at the time in 44, no one had any idea when the day of deliverance would come. So for the time being, they waited, but knew it would come and life would be different than before. They waited with a new spirit of hope, which filled them with joy, peace, and confidence. Christmas offered Simeon exactly that. My eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared before the face of all people. Can Christmas do that for us this year? Can we find the same kind of hope and peace that Simeon and Anna and Myrtle found as we celebrate Christmas this year? I hope so. For in the midst of the pandemic, we are living in the time being. We need to hang on to the spirit of Christmas. We need to be reminded that Emmanuel has come into the world and keeps coming to each of us as we wait for the pandemic to end. God is with us, holding us fast to his heart. She is loving us and caring about us as this virus fills us with so much uncertainty. If the spirit of Christmas has infected us, we can live through the time being with a sense of hope and peace. Anna and Simeon waited on the promise of God. We can do and show the same. We can wake every morning with thankful hearts and again experience the new life God gives. The gift of the Christ child is life, right now, right where we are. And it frees us from some of the uncertainty that imprisons, imprisons us, offering us some hope and peace for the time being. Amen. Let us be in the spirit of prayer. Let us pray. God of all the ages, as this year draws swiftly to a close, we thank you for all the ways that you have been a part of our lives. We are grateful for the blessings of family and friends. We celebrate the ways that you have seen us through times of crisis, of holding us, and we praise you for those times when our joy was overflowing and blessings touched us. Throughout every day, week, month, and season of this past year, you have guided us and have brought us to this day. And so we pray for your continued presence in the year that is before us. As we continue to walk this journey called life, keep us from being comfortable with where we are. Spur us on, encourage us to strive toward the goal that you have set before us. Give us the ability to let go of those habits and deeds 
that are holding us back so that we might fully take hold of the richer, fuller life that you intend for us. As the months and years pass by, we pray that we might grow not only in age, but also in wisdom, knowledge, and maturity. Take our lives and shape us each day more and more into your image. Hear to our prayer for others, especially those who are sick or ailing. Bring to them your healing. Those who mourn, that they might find solace in your abiding comfort. For we ask it in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Go forth into the world rejoicing. Spread the good news of Christ, our light and our Redeemer. May God, Redeemer of Israel, dismiss us in peace. May Jesus Christ, Son of God, Son of Mary, uphold us in love. May the Holy Spirit, the power of God, guide us in truth. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>